What's up, guys? Sin for the win here, and, um, well, initially I wasn't, um, gonna be able to do this, but luckily I just got a really, uh, relieving phone call, so, anyway, that's very cryptic, I know, uh, so, last, uh, I guess it was this morning, um, 4 a.m., I was woken up by, you know, um, my mom had to, uh, get transported to the ICU, intensive care, had to be intubated, um, so some of you know, if you follow me on Twitter and Discord, that was uh, going on. And uh, and if you have talked to me personally through Twitter message, whatever, um, you will know that, yeah, my my mother has a um, chronic degenerative disease with her lungs. And so she has to be on oxygen 24-7. And um, a lot of my you know time goes into helping her. I do all the shopping, uh, cooking, etc. So, <clears throat> and excuse me if I'm... My voice sounds shaky. I'm just truly exhausted mentally and physically. Um, and we will get to the game in a sec. Don't worry. Um, I just wanted to give you guys an explanation why I may not be extremely chipper. And I didn't get to see the whole game because I, you know, I didn't get home for like until like an hour and a half ago or so. So I, you know, caught the tail end of the third and uh, of course the two overtimes. And uh, it was very exciting. But yes, um, I was just called that, you know, she's stable and she might be able to, you know, be taken off a ventilator, which is is in in a sense life support that breathes for you. So, uh, yeah, it's it's been it's been a really rough day and it was very very scary. Um, but hopefully that uh, will be okay. So I'm hoping I could do a synalysis and you guys will forgive me that I didn't watch the entire game. But um, I did check in on some of the highlights and you know stuff like that. So you know, unf- unfortunately, I'm not gonna be able to give you guys an in- as in depth as it would be. But uh, whatever, let's get started. So. Opening things up, who the hell else but William Carlson gets the Knights going again. Two early goals in the first period, and then I can only imagine what Sharks fans would, would think. You kind of wince, you know? You wince, and you're like, okay, here it comes again, you know? It's like, oh, did we not learn anything? You know, we're missing Evander Kane. We're basically rolling with five defensemen. I mean, Paul Martin, I didn't see him out the entire rest of the game. I mean, geez. <laughs> but um, it was a, that's, that's a bit of a statement game. And I will get to the, uh, you know, the goaltender interference in a bit, but I do want to talk about how the Sharks responded to that. The Sharks kept to their game plan, and they kept pushing, and they're rewarded with three big goals. Two from Burnsy, who really needed to have himself a good game. He's, you know, has, last game he coughed the puck up at some inopportune times. Even this game, he had a couple questionable uh, things, but the dude's all hard at the end of the day, and it's, as it's, it's sometimes as, you know, annoyed as I get with uh, some of his turnovers, man, like, He's just he's just 100 heart, and you can't take that away from him. And he's got you know had two huge goals, and you know when I feel like when Sharks have the, you know, that kind of back against the wall mentality, and Brent Burns just starts pinching and doing all these incredible things for the for the team just to get him going. You know, two big goals, almost had a hat trick on the uh, I think it was either the first overtime maybe when there was that power play. I think I guess it was in the second one because uh, I think both the power plays were in that period. He had another almost an open net chance and. But man, what a uh, goaltending clinic that Mark Andre Fleury and Jones are put on! I mean, the tying goal—I expected Jones to have that. In my opinion, that game should have never gone to overtime. He should have had that goal. But shit happens, man. It hit off a skate. Yeah, I still think he—you know—that was a goal he should have had. You know, typical. I come home, I'm like, oh, cool. Sharks are leading three to two. Turn on, start watching. Oh, Vegas ties it. I thought I was like, oh, am I cursed? Because I was watching from the beginning yesterday, and uh, we all know how that went. Or two days ago, whatever. Um, my. My clock, my inner clock is so f- effed right now, guys, so I don't know if you could tell, I've, I probably look like hell right now, but yeah, um, I definitely gotta get something out, man, it's, oh, I need, I miss YouTube and as consistently as I was for a while, but um, yeah, so we get to the overtimes and man, there, is there anything better than overtime playoff hockey, and especially when it's two teams that are, at least in this game, on a very, very even level, they were both they were both playing fantastic and man, there are some big chances either way. Some, you know, turnovers that the Sharks tried to get on to Mark Andre Fleury. Man, that first he stones Goodrow cold, trying to go five hole, and then the next one with Pavs makes a turnover, tries to do a little forehand to the backhand, and Mark Andre Fleury with that poke check. Oh, I was Oh, you have no idea how how ugh. that was that was hard to swallow. And then, you know, seeing Vegas it looked, okay, so I'm going to start talking about the goal that was overturned. When I first saw it, it looked weird. I'm like, 
what the hell is like, I, I saw Jones do a little misstep and I remember back to the Anaheim series where it looked like, um, where I think he was taken out by Dylan Skate and, and in this, and, and then I'm like, dude, that doesn't look, and then I saw him protest afterwards. I'm like, okay, well, Martin Jones is not, he's not the kind of guy to like, he's just a solid goaltender. I, I've never seen him embellish anything or do anything in that category. So I'm like, okay, well, if Martin Jones is saying that, you better watch out. Like, he's just like the most level-headed dude on the planet. If I ever see Martin Jones freaking out, I'm running with him. That's, that's, that's the kind of mentality he brings. And so I'm like, okay, well, you know, they took a look at it and I mean, the, the, I mean, I think it was a March or so, right? Yeah. Coming from behind the net goes, you know, making, making his hockey play. But the problem is Martin Jones is in the paint. His, you know, he's got his uh, stick side out. March or so hits that stick side. Um, yes. Brendan Dillon does have his hand on his back. So I'm, I, I am understanding why some Vegas people are saying that he was being shoved. The, the fact is, is that March or so's skating direction never changed. So with someone's hands on your back, essentially, you can move left to right, left to right freely. The point is, he didn't make an effort to get out of the way. And as a, an attacking player, your job, as per the rule book, is to be aware where the goaltender is at all times. Martin Jones was in the paint. The contact was made. It did put him out of position, and it did not allow him to make to to even get set up for the secondary save. So, by the rules, it is the correct call. I understand the frustration from Vegas. Trust me. I mean, there have been ones that I've looked at this season that I didn't agree with that have been overturned for the Sharks and I think everyone this year can have some sort of you know thing where it should have been goaltender interference and wasn't and you know it's so you know something definitely needs to be done in the offseason to really really set it even more in stone but I mean per the rules as they are as written out and with the video evidence on the ice it is the correct call and you know it, it does suck and it does seem to you know kind of kind of suck the air out of the building for for Vegas but you know, at the end of the day, that's what the video review was brought in for. And, um, yeah, so, I mean, I, I, I know your pain. I mean, last year I felt that Pavelski was shoved into Rene in that, you know, that triple overtime game that the Sharks eventually lost. I felt that he was, you know, cross-checked from behind and that's what put him in into the goaltender. And, but, you know, same kind of deal that, you know, last year, I guess it's, it wasn't as contra. I mean, that one was, <sighs> It seemed a lot more cut and dry until you slow it down. The same kind of thing with this one. It seemed like there maybe wasn't even that much contact, but when you when you slow it down and you see the way Martin Jones was positioned afterwards, I do think it's the right call. You can call me biased or whatever the hell, but it's on the rule books. I mean, the analysts, the broadcasters, all a bunch of other you know fans and of other teams that I've seen are all are all agreeing that yeah, it is goaltender interference. So I am sorry, Vegas fans, but it's the way it goes sometimes. And at the end of the day, I mean. It was a great game, back and forth, and series is even. And honestly, like I said before, it's a disservice if this if these two teams don't go to six or seven games. Just yeah, the first game was a bit of a letdown, but this game, this game, I think was is indicative of how this series can and should, and hopefully will be played. And wow, just ugh, double overtime game, man. And I'm so so essentially, I did almost get to watch a full hockey game, but. Um, you know, it was uh, <laughs> overtimes and half of a third period, so not quite, but um, yeah. So I do apologize not being able to go too deep in the analysis on those other two goals, but uh, let's talk about Couture's goal. Um, what a singular effort from Timo Meyer to just keep his feet moving, and that's why he drew the penalty. He kept his feet moving. The, the, the defenders stopped skating. If you stop skating and you have your stick in on someone, they're going to call that hooking, especially if you're going into the slot, and especially with, like, in for a guy like Meyer, who's, you know, who, who's a, who, who really skates hard all the time. He's, he's a workhorse out there. And, you know, he, you have to keep your feet moving if you want to stay with him. And if you, that, that was, yeah, that's just Vegas, bad penalties all around. I mean, the entire game, and there's more that could have been called like slashes. Perron was going wild with his stick a few times. Um, but yeah. And again, yes. And I'm sure they're blown calls both ways. You know, that's how it goes in every single hockey game. But, um, I'm not, I'm not the type to blame a ref, uh, in, in any real situation, unless it's, you know, to not failing to get control of the game. And like I said, uh, with the whole Kane situation, I agree with them kicking him out. Um, the whole suspension thing, that's another issue, but yes, you got to kick him out because you need to send that message. You got to get control of the game. And that's what I was, you know, upset about in the Anaheim, you know, sharks game three. But anyway, let's talk about the Couture goal, the power play. 
Um, Sharks had scored once on it. Other than that, you know, Vegas has a great penalty kill, but also they have Marc-Andre Fleury, and oftentimes that just seems like it's enough for them. And in this case, the Sharks just kept pressing. They they, they made started making crisper passes, faster decisions, and you guys hear me all the time, especially when I'm playing Be a Pro or ESHL, fast decisions, f- quick passes, crisp plays, like, that's the key to being a fast team. Puck moves faster than skates. So when they're in the zone, they start making quick passes, and, you know, it's who else but Clutcher, man? He's just God. I love Clutcher. <laughs> he's he's just he's such an amazing player, and he's well, he's clutch. What else can you say? He's he's Logan Clutcher, man. So um, it's an incredible effort from Mark Andre Fleury. Still, he almost still made that save. So God damn. Um, the goaltender duel so far hasn't lived up to expectations, but there were flashes of greatness from both teams in there. Oh no, yeah. Let's talk about that knob save a little bit. That was. And extremely fortunate. I mean, that's what playoff hockey is. It can go. It's. It comes down sometimes the bounces, just like the the tying goal went off a skate. Martin Jones had trouble handling it. Shit happens, man. What? How? The the point is, how do you respond to it? And, you know, tonight the sharks the sharks got the W. They responded. They evened up the series going back home, and. This is what I'm excited to. Both times on 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 their home eyes, Vegas got off to an early start. I want to see how they're going to do on the road in the Shark Tank. I know they did all right in Staples Center, but how many Vegas fans were there? Kings fans, they're they're still back in 2014. We don't need to talk about them. I think us, me and Vegas fans, we can all agree Kings fans are, you know, obnoxious. Except for you, Parker, if you're watching. <laughs> I think I got a couple Kings fans followers. I don't know how they stick with me all that chirping. But, um, yeah, man, so... I'm tired as hell, so I apologize if I was any incoherent rambling going on in this, but, um, so yeah, that's gonna have to be this analysis for this one, it was just a fantastic, it just looked like a fantastic game, and I'm glad I was able to catch the overtimes, because that was just intense, fast hockey from both squads, and and amazing goaltender saves in either direction, and close chances, and holding your breath, and man, a little bit of everything, so I can't wait to see how this series keeps developing. Going back into San Jose, though... Sharks, I think Sharks got to win the next game, man. You, this this game was a statement. We're getting Kane back next game on home ice. We need that was the statement. We need to carry it over into the next game. And I'm gonna say it. Pauly Martin needs to be scratched. Joachim Ryan needs to go back in. You're sitting him for half the game anyway. Joachim Ryan, his legs don't give out, man. I think he's got to get back in. Him and him and him and uh, Burns got to pair up again. But um, yeah. All right. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. Um, you know, hopefully uh. <laughs> I don't get too many people hating on me for my view on that goaltender interference, but it is the rule book rules. So let the dislikes fly, I guess, guys. But if not, I hope you guys enjoyed this. Remember to leave that like, and I'll see you in the next one. If watching my videos just isn't enough sin for you, be sure to go over there on Twitter and shoot me a follow. And you could even join our Discord server as well to talk with some of the other sinners out there. The links to both are in the description.